Hi, I'm Michael Wojcik, and I'm here at the Sawmill Hills Conservation Area in Northampton uh, as part of Kestrel Land Trust's Learning with the Land series. And it's March, it's mid-March. Uh, we don't have leaves to really identify trees yet, uh, but we're going to look at some winter buds, uh, which are soon going to turn into this year's leaves. Let, let's see what we can find. What we're seeing is, is a result of the conditions and the growing conditions that this particular shrub experienced last year. So we are doing a little bit of time travel. So here we have these, these buds of this woody specimen, and they do appear a little bit like the hoof of a deer. If you look at it sideways, sometimes you can hold it up against your glove a little bit so you can see it a little bit easier. Um, so this is witch hazel. And another thing that we can see um, are the remnants of the flowers. And we have... So this is a very unique species in that it flowers in the fall. And these are just what's left of the flowers, but in the fall you can see these spidery yellow petals. And a lot of times they're camouflaged with the yellow foliage. Um, but a very unique species that flowers in October instead of in the spring. So here we have a young tree uh, which gives us access to look at, at the twigs and the buds. And there's a couple of things you can notice. We don't see a lot of small fine twigs here. We have big stout twigs. And if we follow and start out at the terminal bud here, here we have these terminal buds. And we can do a little bit of time travel because these buds are the result of the growing conditions last summer when the buds formed. So by the time the leaves fell off of this tree in the autumn, these buds were already formed. And in this particular species, all of the leaves that are going to grow for the coming growing season are already formed and contained inside this bud. So the whole results of the growing season really have a lot to do with the growing conditions that happened last year along with the conditions we get this spring and this summer. One thing you can notice about this particular young tree is the branching pattern and we can see reflected here that the branches are opposite each other on the twig. And as we can look at the buds, we can also see that the buds are opposite each other on the twig. And, and that's one thing we can see. The other thing that you can notice is there's a scar here. So in addition to this terminal bud, we can see the leaf scar. So that's where last year's bud, uh, leaf was attached. And in this case, we can also see if you look really closely, and you may not be able to see unless you're out in the field looking at it yourself, are some tiny little bundle scars where the vascular vessels were actually attaching the leaf to the twig itself. And in this case, it looks a little bit like a monkey face if you look closely at it. So this is ash, this is white ash. And another thing you can do when you follow along the twig, we have a series of these leaf scars and a series of this year's buds. And then we can also see this last year's terminal bud scar. And you can see a little bit here where the color changes from this younger greenish bark to this grayish, a little bit older bark. So here's the site where last year's terminal bud was. So we can look and see how much growth we got during the last growing season. So we can do a little bit of time travel and actually go back in time and look at the different conditions. And when we're looking at all of the details, we can get down to a species designation just by looking at the characteristics of these buds and these leaf scars. Here's another species also with opposite branching pattern and when the leaves 
leaf out, we'll notice the leaves are opposite each other as well. So of, of the, the woody trees in this area that are native or naturalized, um, we have ash, which we just spoke about. We have maples, and then we also have dogwoods. And in this case, we're, we're looking at a sugar maple. So we have opposite branching pattern. We have smaller buds, in this case, darker brown with, with multi-scales, and they're pointed. And we can differentiate, off, differentiate often uh, between the sugar maples and the red maples. The red maples typically have a, a more reddish bud and, and they're a little bit rounded at the tips. They're not so pointed as these. And again, we have fully formed leaves in these buds. If we took this bud and we did a little dissection and we looked at it in a microscope or with some magnification, we'd actually find the iconic sugar maple leaf already formed and already folded up and present inside this bud. So here we have a young sapling actually growing out uh, down at the base of a larger tree, which is the same species. And one of the noticeable things about, about the buds here, uh, a wonderful naturalist that wrote uh, a lot of terrific books many years ago mentioned once that, uh, that the buds of this species are a little bit impatient and when you look at them it's March and these buds are not about to, to, to open but you can already see that there's some extension of the buds and this this lighter green colored here where there's separation between the scales almost like they're they're impatient like they just can't wait to get started and can't wait for spring to come and some of you might feel the same way and one of the identifying characteristics of this species this is black birch and it has a wonderful wintergreen smell to the bark. So if you take just a little bit of the twig and scrape it with your fingernail, you can see a little bit of green there. And give it a whiff, and you'll get a really terrific wintergreen smell. In fact, um, wintergreen is actually harvested from the bark of, of black birch. Uh, it's quite predominant and it's really a telltale sign of this species. So here we can see this young tree actually has a whole cluster of buds at the terminus here. So one of these is going to be the terminal bud where the branch is still going to continue to elongate. Um, we also have these these side buds here as well and if you look closely you can see there's a little bit of fuzz just a little bit of hair growing out of this these overlapping scales of this bud and the bud is also pointed so this is northern red oak and while it's not usually the case that there's a correlation between the buds and the leaves themselves but northern red oak and the other related species in the red oak group have pointed tips of the leaves and they also have pointed buds. So it's kind of nice where there's some cooperation and things go together. And the other major grouping of the oaks, there's a lot of different species of oaks in, these re in this region, um, are the white oak group and the white oak group um, while not necessarily round buds, they have rounded tips. They're not completely pointed, and they also have rounded tips on the leaves. So there's a nice little grouping there of the leaves and the buds going together. If you remember earlier, we talked about uh, branching pattern 
being opposite. So here we have another opposite. You can see a couple different examples here of the younger twigs and branches. Some of the older branches. And one of the distinctive characteristics we're seeing here, which is going to become more prominent as, as spring progresses, are the, is the reddish hue of the youngest twigs and then the buds themselves. And if you remember, there's a limited number of trees in this region that have opposite branching patterns. So in this case, we're looking at another maple. So here we have red maple. When we talked about sugar maple, we had those brown pointed buds and here we can see that the buds still with multi scales reddish a little bit rounded on the tips not quite so pointed uh, again with their own version of iconic maple leaves which are a little different than sugar maple leaves um, all preformed uh, and ready to grow when spring comes. Here we have some very prominent buds. Uh, pretty easy to recognize by these long spear-like shapes. Very pointed, very narrow, multiple scales. This beautiful chestnut brown. And we also see present here, um, and that'll be to varying degrees by this time of the season, we have these last year's leaves, which are quite persistent and often don't, don't come off until right when the new buds are beginning to, to bloom. This is another one of the species that has the determinant buds, so all of the year's growth, with a few exceptions, are going to be contained just in this single bud. Sometimes there could be a combination of flowers and leaves within the same bud. And uh, just the leaves really make a beautiful scene during the winter. These kind of lacy, they get thin and, and worn out as the winter goes on. They make some beautiful music when the, when the wind blows. And this is uh, American Beach. The more that you start to learn about trees and all their different characteristics, be it their bark, their leaves, their winter buds, the more you start to realize what a diversity of species we have. And you really don't have to go far. And we haven't really traveled very far on the ground here in order to see a bunch of different species. Uh, and there are certainly more species that we pass right by, especially when we're looking at buds the one difficult thing about buds is a lot of times they're high up in the crowns of the trees and you can't see them. But there are usually low-hanging branches or young specimens where you can really start to look at the varied differential that, that we get with buds. Um, and they're all beautiful when you really start to notice their details. Um, winter buds might be something that you ever even thought to look for, uh, but now you know they're there and uh, gives you another thing to look at when you're walking in the woods or even in your park or even in your front yard.